In this overview tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Crossword Compiler to make cryptic or quick puzzles. So this is an example of a cryptic puzzle. These kind of grids typically have quite a lot of black squares, but all the words intersect with other words multiple times. Every word has a clue, and the clue in a cryptic puzzle would be cryptic, and in quick would usually be a short synonym or some factual based kind of clue. So these two types of puzzle are basically the same in terms of designing the grid. The only difference is the types of clue that you write. So to get started making a new puzzle like this, you can go to the new puzzle window. So when you first start the program, this will be the first screen that you see. And to make a cryptic or quick puzzle, you just click the top left icon cryptic or quick. After selecting that, you then have to choose a size. So the standard newspaper style puzzles that you typically get are 15 by 15 or occasionally something like 21 times 21 if it's a larger special weekend puzzle. But you can choose any sizes you like here of the square sizes or put in your own custom size on the right hand side if given width and height. Grid patterns are provided for a variety of sizes. If you want to see which sizes there are grid patterns available for you can look in this box here and you can see that these standard square 15 by 15, 13 by 13, 21 by 21 sizes do have available grid patterns. So I'll just make a standard 15 by 15 puzzle. So the next step in this wizard, you get to choose a grid pattern. And these are shown on the left here with different names telling you how many words there are and how many letters. So the 29 word grid pattern might look like that. I can just click on different patterns on this list or scroll down if I want to have slightly more words. You can click on one of these ones or fewer words, one near the top. So you just choose a grid pattern that you like and then proceed. Alternatively, you can, if you want to, design the grid yourself. But to start with, I'm going to do the simplest thing, which is to make a puzzle using one of the provided grid patterns. So let's select that grid pattern and click the button you selected grid pattern. The next step is of course to put some words into the grid. So here the top button put words in yourself allows you to do what you like manually. You could type words in, you could use auto find etc. Auto fill with default options will make a complete filled grid for you just by automatically filling all the word slots from the provided word list. Fill grid with custom options is basically the same, but allows you to customize, for example, which word list to use, some of the scoring options and things like that. So for the moment, let's just do the simplest thing and auto fill to make a puzzle. So it automatically fills it extremely quickly and you now have a completed grid. And you can check all the different words on here. And if you don't like the fill, you can click on this menu button Refill from beginning will make a new fill starting again with a completely new word in the first place. If I click that, I will get a completely different fill. And I can click this as many times as I like and see what there is. If you want something close to this one but not quite this one, you can click the next button. That will just keep incrementally changing words as you go along. Because this is such an easy grid to fill, you can see that the only word slot that's changing is this one here. So this function is usually most useful if you're actually just filling a small corner of the grid. For a complete grid like this, you probably want to refill it from the beginning if you don't like it. You can check the words used using words used on this menu here, which will give you an alphabetical list. You can scroll down, which may be easier than inspecting the words in the grid itself. The score on the right here gives you the score of the word in the provided word list. So higher scores are usually regarded as being better words. You can see versions here is score of 25. That's the plural, so it's downweighted and given a lower score. If you're interested in changing the scores yourself, uh, you can see the separate video tutorial on using scores. Once you've viewed several different grids, if you want to view several different grids, you can use this left button here to go back to an early one if you preferred one of the early ones. The bottom here tells you which film number you're on. Fill number eight. If I go next, that will take me to fill number nine or back to fill number eight or seven. So I look at this grid. That looks kind of fun. So I can click the accept button. 
So now I have a completed grid pattern. I want to write the clues. I can go to Review Edit Clues. So there's a button here on the toolbar, Review Edit Clue List. Or I can go to the Clue menu, Review Edit Clues. You can leave this panel open all the time whilst you're editing the grid if you like, or you can just close it when you're not using it. That's up to you. You can now write clues just by typing directly into this window for each clue in turn, just using it like a word processor. You can use bold, italic if you want to, or spell check the clues when you've finished. If you want to take slightly more control over the clue, you can put the cursor on a word in the grid and click the edit clue button. That will open the clue editor. So here again, you can just type in the clue, but here you've also got options to add an explanation or citation. You often want to add an explanation or citation if you're writing a cryptic puzzle to explain the clue. You can also change the word format. The word format is the number of letters, but if you've got something like all purpose here, you, then your word format would be three hyphen seven, as you can see here. So you can also open the clue editor as I did then by double clicking on a word in the review edit clue window. And you can edit this word format if you like. If I just change this to 10, you'll see the punctuation disappears in the solution word. I go back to 37, it puts it back. You can also just directly edit this box up here if you want to. So let's put it back to being correct, all purpose. If you're writing a quick puzzle, clues might be just straightforward synonyms or factually based. You can look up words in a dictionary for inserting into the clue editor. So if I double clicked on a word like derive here, I could click on this icon on the toolbar show word web. That will show WordWeb Pro, the add-on dictionary that's available with the Crossword Compiler Bundle or available separately. So if I click on that icon, that will show you definitions and senses and synonyms of the word derive. So here in the top box, I've got verb derive and various different definitions. If I just wanted to paste that into the clue editor, I could select it and click copy, and that would insert it in as the clue. You can also look at the synonyms on the bottom here or select a synonym and click copy to insert that. Or you can look at the various different related words under type of and types. And for other types of words, there'll be other forms of related words here. You can also, of course, look things up in any other optional add-on dictionaries you have installed. So here, for example, you've got the Chambers Dictionary, the Collins Dictionary, the Oxford Dictionary of English or the Shorter Oxford English Dictionary. These are all available as separate add-ons if you want them. You can just click on the tab and that will show you the definition in that dictionary. You can also use the public free Wikipedia and Wiktionary references online. If you want to navigate clues in the edit clue window, you can just click these arrows here left and right or across and down. So to go right, that would take me to Jijia Steve, Red Cross, so on. If you want to add a clue from a database, you can select the database you want to add the clue from at the bottom here. So the default database is empty by default. The American database is provided and does have some clues in, especially for quick puzzles, this might be useful. Say for example, if I wanted to just use not al fresco, the clue in this database, I can click use clue and it will put in the clue. And then it will appear in this list here. If you have the clue database, you can also just add clues automatically from the database, going to the clue menu, use clues from database. Here you can select a database, click OK, and it'll just automatically insert all the clues that exist. Here it says it's got 12 clues from the database, 14 words have no clues. And then you can write these missing clues as you like. Let's just close this and go back to making a new puzzle. Let's say we want to take a bit more control over the words that are used or design the grid manually. So we could go to the cryptic or quick as before, choose 15 by 15. But now I'm going to design a grid pattern myself. Now, If you click design the grid myself, you'll get a completely empty grid, which you can just fill in the black squares where you want them. But for cryptic and quick puzzles, actually, there's a very standard set of patterns. You'll notice in this picture here, every alternate block is black. So if I click this fill in alternate blocks button, that will make an empty puzzle with those basic patterns filled in 
which makes it very quick and easy to design new grids. So I click fill in alternate blocks. I can then choose which type of alternating pattern that I want. So if I select this button, I will then get an empty grid with alternate blocks filled in. Now I can just insert black squares where I want them by double clicking in the grid. You can also navigate with the cursor keys and press the space bar when you want to insert a black square. You will notice that when I put in a black square here, there's another one is being put in in the symmetrical position over here. So that's because these kind of puzzles in newspapers that conventionally have an S-like symmetry. You can change that on the grid menu, going to grid symmetry, and here we've got normal symmetry. You can also put in dual symmetry, which will put in four symmetric blocks or left, right, top, bottom, as you wish. This is the standard setting and by default will make sure that your grid remains symmetrical, and therefore acceptable for publication. You can also turn on grid style checking here for cryptic and quick. And that will just give you a warning if you get any two letter words or un consecutive unchecked letters. So if I turn that on and then accidentally make a two letter word like that, you'll see that the two letter words are highlighted to warn me that that's not a good idea. Alternatively here, I've now got a run of three unchecked letters, meaning there's no intersections and they're highlighted in purple to show me about that. So if I have those style checking options on, it makes it easier not to make mistakes because they're immediately flagged up if you make them. So to find words to fit in this grid, you can just type them in where you want. So if I wanted to have hope down here, you can change the typing direction by pressing tab. So that would be a cross and that would be down, or you can use these arrows on the toolbar. So that's writing a cross and that's going down. So if I wanted to put hope here, I just type H-O-P-E, space to put in a black square, and then I've got that there. If I want to find words in the word list, I can right click. So to find a 15 word starting with P suitable to go in here, I can put the cursor somewhere in this word, and right click, and that will give me matches in the word list. So you can just double click on here to put in a word. So paint the town red sounds fine. Pantothenic acid may be a bit obscure. So take your pick. Let's go for parliamentarian and click insert. So you can just go around the grid doing that. If there's a two directions in a given slot, if I right click here, that will give me a down direction. But if I press the tab so that the cursor changes to a cross, then it will search the cross. You can also use this button, find auto find on the toolbar to open auto find to see the words that will fit. So this way you can go in and fill the grid quite quickly. At this point, I probably want to put in some more black squares. You don't want to have too many 15 letter words, but let's see what we could put in this one down here. If I right click on there, I get three matches that would fit down here. Now, one issue here is there are lots of intersections. How do I know that if I put in say birds of paradise down here, that isn't going to mess up one of these other words. Is there a word that will fit across here, for example? Well, that's where this button on the bottom left comes in. That will check the intersections to make sure there are words that exist in all the intersecting word slots. So if I check this button on the bottom left of the window here, you'll see it now go only lists one word. This is the only word that it's found where there are possible intersections along all these directions here. So here you can see you could easily put muck or something in there and it's not a problem. So let's put in some more black squares to make this um, a more reasonable kind of grid. So that looks okay I guess. If you want to then try and see whether the grid is fillable you can use autofill. That will automatically try to fill the grid. If I put a cursor on some square in the, which is open, click autofill, and that will say, oh, the program couldn't fill the grid. So let's click OK and cancel. So what's that telling me is I've still got too many 15 letter words intersecting. So it's not too surprising. I've got this very long one here and this very one long here. So 
probably the best solution here is to put in some more black squares. It could also be besides putting some impossible combination of letters somewhere, but that doesn't look to be the case to me. So I could, for example, put a black square in here. Now I can put the cursor up here, click autofill again. Ah, now it's okay, there exists a fill. And again, you can view different fills from the beginning. And you could just accept that if you want to complete the puzzle, or you could go back and continue filling it manually. If you have the professional grid filler, you can also go to words, fill grid. Here you can change the words, but you can also in the professional grid filler, do manual word selection. I click fill now, that will open this window here, which shows me the words that will fit in this slot. But here it will also analyze in much more depth the intersections. And this is telling me that if I put Senator down here, I'm also going to have to put flight attendant as my word down there. So it's listed as a forced word at the bottom here. If I change to a different word, most of them, in fact, here are forcing the word flight attendant. So let's go for sunburn, roughshod, nourished. Now it's automatically put in flight attendant and it's going into this word over here. And you can just go on like this, choosing your words one by one. So at this point it's becoming quite constrained and you can see that if I put in goosebumps here, it's telling me several of the words I'm going to have to fill and what they're going to fill them with. So you can continue using this till the end or click stop or click auto pick if you want it to revert to doing it automatically. Again, once you're happy, you can click accept. You'll notice it hasn't filled this slot here. That's because the autofill, if you're doing it on a partial grid, will only fill the interconnected word slots. This slot here is completely independent. If you want to fill that, you can just right click and click busk say, that's fine. So I can now go to review, edit clues and go and edit, write my clues. So let's say I wanted to write a cryptic clue in here. So I'll open the clue editor and that gives us access to these extra tools on the toolbar. So let's see whether there's a good anagram I could use to make a clue for this. So here we get a list of multi-word anagrams. If there are any one word anagrams, they'll be listed at the top. And then as you go down, you see it split up into more and more words. Well, bathed eye, that sounds um, a possibility. Habited is kind of like clothed or something. So maybe I want to do clothed. If you want to paste this in directly, you can click copy here. Here I probably want I at the front, so I can edit that, I bathed. Um, and then I need something to indicate that it's an anagram. If you're stuck for ideas, you can click this book icon on the toolbar, which has a set of various useful tools for writing cryptic clues. So for example, that letter indicators will show you abbreviations frequently used for particular letters. Here I might want to look at anagram indicators. So I look at C, for example. Well, I could bathe capriciously, I guess. Select that. Clothed, I bathe capriciously. So here, an explanation. If I wanted to add an explanation, I could put anagram of I bathed. And then you can go on and write the rest of the clues. There are other things you can find in this anagrams window that might be useful. If you click on the partial words tab, that will tell you all the words that you can make using some of the letters of habited. So I could also consider writing a cryptic clue based on an anagram of baited plus the letter H. If I click on the contained in tab, that tells me words that contain the letter in habited. So for example, I could consider having a clue which was talking about brain death without RNA. So if I take the letters in brain death, subtract the letters RNA, I get the letters inhabited. So here they're listed in priority where they've got both words, or actually words. If you go further down, you'll end up with words and combinations of letters. So usually the most useful suggestions are somewhere near the top of these lists. Another thing you can do is link clues together using this link clues button, and that will allow you to write a single clue for multiple word slots in the grid. 
If you're interested in doing that, there's a separate video tutorial on using linked clues. So let's go to a completed puzzle now. What else might you want to do? Um, well, if you want to customize some of the options about the display, you can use clue properties. Clue properties is this icon on the toolbar in the review edit clues, or you can use clue properties on the clue menu. So here you can change things like the display of these numbers on the left here. So here I've got right aligned bold numbers. If I deselect those and check with period and click OK, you'll find instead they look like that. For cryptic and quick puzzles, usually the solution lengths are shown after the clues. So for example, that would be the word format. So here, round the clock in the clue editor has the word format 535, and that's shown in brackets after the clue. But if you only want the formats to appear if it's a compound like round the clock, but not if it's something like ashamed, you can click this option only if compound. And there are various options here for formatting the headers, the spacings, or you can go to the printout tab and control some options about the spacing and layout when you print out the clues and the answers. If you want to change properties of the grid, you can go to grid properties. And this allows you to change things like the colors of the blocks. I could make green blocks if I want to and have the letters in navy blue. You can change the relative size of the letters and the lines. You can also change the targeted output size in millimeters for both the puzzle and the solution. If I click apply, that will apply it. And you can see I've now got green squares. If you want to preview how the puzzle or solution looks, you can use the puzzle and solution buttons on the toolbar here. So that will show me the puzzle as being seen by the solver when they solve it, and the solution, what would be when I printed the solution grid. I might also want to add a title, and you can do that under information on the file menu. So this is an example puzzle which already has a title put in, an author and copyright. You can also add a description and any particular solving instructions. If you want to check the grid before finishing it, you can look at statistics on the file menu. So this window shows you things like the number of words, number of squares, mean length, number of letters used, and so on. You can also click on these extra tabs at the top here. So words will show you the words in the grid. If you want to see where they are. So if I was a bit worried about primeval, I could click on that and it would show me where it is. Or you can look at the distribution of word lengths. So my 13 letter words are there. Similar words will check for duplicated letter sequences. So here, there is only three letters repeated. Here, there's four letters repeated. But that's probably OK. That's not too much duplication, so don't need to worry about that. Accidental words will check against words in the blacklist. So HO is probably not too much of a problem. It's sufficiently short. But you might want to be on the lookout if there are runs of other nasty four-letter words you didn't want accidentally appearing. And the letters tab shows you the distribution of letters. When the puzzle is completed, you can just print it out. Or so if you go to Print Export Worksheet, that will produce a page suitable for solving. And you can either print it, export it to PDF, or export it to MS Word. So if I just click Print Preview, that will show you what you'd get, which is a nice title at the top, and the grid for solving, and the clues. And after the clues, we've got the solution length, because that was the option we selected. If I want to print out for reviewing or sending to an editor, I can use File, Print. So here I could choose to include the puzzle and the solution, maybe the clues and the clues with answers. And here I've selected to print them on a separate page. So if I preview this, you'll see that I get the grid, but now the clues followed by the answers and then in brackets, any explanation of the clue after each answer. So this could be useful for reviewing and checking the puzzle. Then the last page is the separate solution grid. So you could either print that out or save to PDF. If you want to publish it directly, you can go to File, Export, and then you can export as rich text, including the clues and the puzzle, producing something similar to the print functions. 
or you can export export just say a picture of the grid or a PDF. There are lots of options here. If you're making a puzzle for a publisher, it's probably best to ask them what format they want. For web publishing, you can export an interactive web puzzle by using this button on the toolbar or going to File, Web Export, Export to Files to produce files you can upload to your own website. If you have WordPress, there's also a plugin you can use. See the separate video if you're interested in uploading to your website. That's about it for this overview tutorial, so I hope you have fun making your own puzzles.